have Benny. Benny, if you go ahead with your question. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I think an important reason people don't change their diet is because that's what our mothers cooked and our fathers ate and our grandparents too. How should we address these inherited habits? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same way we would address anything, you know, the same way we would address any kind of habits that people have. Habits are really hard to break. People break habits when they're ready to break habits. I eat as much as I can, a whole foods plant-based diet. I try to practice healthy, you know, relationality to the best of my ability. And I'm a fallible human being who screws up and, you know, and has to be compassionate with myself when I do that and recognize, right, that everybody is going to do, like all of us have habits that are really hard to break. And we don't break habits. Like I can't break my own habits, for example, until, until I'm really ready to break a habit. And you are probably very much the same because we're human beings. So people hold on to things for different reasons. People, most people, let me back up. Nobody, none of us is anything other than the hard wiring that we were born with and every single experience we've had throughout our lives. It, the, we are the synthesis of these things, of our minute to minute experiences and the hard wiring that we've been born with. You know, expecting somebody to be different than who and how they are is like expecting a tree that's been rained on not to be wet. I watch my family make, you know, unhealthy food choices at times and psychological choices at times. And it makes sense to me because that's what people do. People make unhealthy choices for reasons that make sense to them even if they're not aware of that rationally that these reasons make sense, that, that reasons make sense to them. So what you're asking about in terms of people's attachment to traditional foods, it's no different than their attachment in some ways. You know, it's no different than their attachment to foods with other kinds of symbolic meanings. Helping people, the more relationally literate we are, the more we create an environment so that when we're talking to the people we care about, those people feel safe in our presence. They don't feel judged by us. They feel safe and they feel connected with us and they will be much more receptive to what we have to say. And if they've received what they, we have to say and they still don't change, it's because they're not ready to change and that's their choice to make. Thank you, Melanie. Up next, we have uh, Corinne. Hi, Melanie. Hi. I'm just making the transition and I have to say, I've never heard the word carnism and especially the idea that you've made me realize that I see certain animals as food and not beings. So that is something I'm really going to think about. Um, I've had some success recently when I tell people that I've gone plant -based, whole food plant-based um, by telling people what I eat, some of the really, really good foods and recipes that I have found. And because a lot of people think you just eat salad, you know, all day long. So, um, so I try to have a few examples in my head of recent meals that I've ate that, you know, don't involve salad. But um, so I just want to say thank you very much. And plus, we are the same age. And mm -hmm. if there weren't enough reasons to go, plant-based vegan your skin alone would make me oh. want to <laughs> make the change so i'm going to head you. over to carnism.org and thank you very much thank you thanks melanie up next we have stephanie hi stephanie hello dr joy thank you for the presentation so I'm a vegan advocate with like a lot of my friends and families, especially the ones I see suffering with ailments and just think that they would benefit from it. But one thing that I get a lot um, is uh, eating meat is biblical. It's in the Bible. So God put animals on here for us to eat and that's what it's here to do. So what would you suggest to say? Mm -hmm. It's a great question. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there are some groups that are um, uh, that actually have specific answers. If you want factual answers um, to these questions or, or specific concrete answers to to these kinds of justifications, um, I think there's a group called Christians for Animal Rights and the Catholic Vegetarian 
Association, you can just Google it. Um, there is some good information out there. One thing I would say is that often people um, refer to religion as a um, way, and I don't want to say what's true for your family. This is just what happens sometimes. People refer to religion um, as a way to avoid having to actually really engage with the, the conversation. I've never met a person who really wanted to be vegan and you know, eat plant-based and said, you know what? I just can't do it as much as I want to because my religion forbids it. God wouldn't let me. Um, generally people find a way to make their religion fit whatever they've decided they want to do. Um, so I would just share information with them, get these, this, you know, these sort of sound bites or factual information from the websites that I suggested searching for and, you know, recognize that if they really do take this information in and they really are, or they really learn the information, then, um, if they're ready to change their religion should not get in the way. And you can ask them, one of the things that I recommend is that, you know, for, for when it comes to the people in your life, you can say to them, listen, I would really like to share information about eating animals with you and about veganism with you, not because I'm trying to change you, but because I really want you to understand me and what the world looks like through my eyes. This issue is so fundamental to who I am, to what matters to me. You won't really understand me unless you understand this issue. And so that's a very safe and respectful way to get people to understand and really ask them to be allies to you because you need that. I should say that um, at carnism.org, we have videos, including that catch on video that I shared. We have a new video coming out in a few days, which is this, it's a seven minute, seven ish minute video about what the world looks like through vegan eyes and how differently we see things. And this is um, something that also we designed to be a tool to help open up productive conversations about eating animals because it's so hard to start that conversation. So we'll have that at carnism.org as well for anybody who wants to access that and use it.